We are hanging with dragons this week on the Reptile Party's YouTube channel. Hello everyone, welcome again to the Reptile Parties and YYC Nature Center YouTube channel here in Calgary, Alberta. And this week's video, we are talking about dragons. I've talked about them a few times in the past, so I wanted to give an update, especially because we have a new dragon. Uh, we just recently adopted this uh, young lady here. She's about two years old. And we got her from someone that uh, just was going through some stuff and uh, needed to to find a new home for her dragon uh completely understandable so it wasn't like the thing that drives us nuts or it's like oh yeah i'm bored i don't want it anymore uh she very much loved her but just life is sort of as has happened to a lot of us lately uh, and i guess throughout the dawn of time uh sometimes there's just circumstances that make it really hard now this is a chinese water dragon also known as an asian water dragon um, they are found in Cambodia, other parts of Southeast Asia, uh, Thailand, China. They are oftentimes really, really little when you see them in a pet store. They're often confused with little baby green iguanas, but they do not have the size uh, of a green iguana. They also are uh, herbivores, or they're insectivores, not herbivores. Now, one of the things you see, unfortunately, all the time with water dragons, uh, the person we got her from had rescued her, uh, so this was not an issue with her care. But uh, you can see... It's okay. It's okay. That the end of her nose and her lip is basically missing. Uh, they, if kept in too small of a habitat, and especially a glass habitat, they will sort of rub their faces against the glass and they can wear it down to the bone. So you can see, unfortunately, the damage that has been done to her uh, from probably being kept in too small of a habitat. So you see this all the time. I've seen several water dragons with this, and it comes from keeping them in too small of a habitat and keeping them in glass. So right now she's in a grow tent. That is what she uh, was adopted with. And we are gonna build her a new uh, large uh, habitat that's not made out of glass. Now, this is not the only dragon that we have. Uh, you've met them before, but let's uh, meet our other water dragon. So we do a bit of a comparison here between our Australian water dragon and our Chinese water dragon. Uh, you can see right off the bat, their colors are very different. Uh, the uh, Australian water dragon is gray. They oftentimes have reds and oranges underneath. Uh, the Asian water dragons are gr green and blue. I'm not sure if it'll pop necessarily on the, the camera, but she does have kind of like some blue streaks down her side as well as up in her crest. But both of them have these crests. So that helps them because both these animals are semi-aquatic. They are semi-arboreal, semi-aquatic, which means it's very, very complicated to house them. Both these animals will sit on tree branches above ponds or streams or rivers, lakes, and if they feel threatened, they jump off of the branch and they dive into the water and swim away, and they can stay underwater for up to 90 minutes. So they do like to swim. So you need to have a large water area uh, to keep them. You're gonna have to have that heated, and if you don't wanna be doing water changes all the time, you're gonna have to put in a really good filtration system as well. So not only do they behave similarly in terms of how they, they escape from predators, they both love to bask on branches. They are both insectivores. They will eat a lot of bugs. Big difference between them in terms of getting one as a pet is price. And that is because of one main thing. Australia does not allow the export of their animals. So any Australian water dragons are going to be captive bred. Asian water dragons oftentimes are wild caught. 
Uh, there are breeders that are working with them to get captive bred populations. It would be fantastic if they were no longer being taken out of the wild. They are actually vulnerable now because of habitat loss and because of being collected for the pet trade. But the challenge becomes uh, with a lot of these animals, like these guys and toke geckos and, and uh, a lot of sort of your Indonesian animals, is that it's cheaper for a importer or a facility to bring them in wild caught than it is to spend the time and energy in breeding them, hatching the eggs, raising up the eggs, the babies to a size that they are okay to sell. Um, that balance between business and making you know a living and uh, caring for the animals, a lot of people do it really well, but some just are abhorrent and, and it's, it's very sad. So that's a question you should ask if you really want a Chinese water dragon is you should ask for one that's captive bred because if they're wild caught, they can have a higher parasite load. Uh, they can be very dehydrated and stressed. If you get a wild caught animal, you probably want to take it to the vet and that's going to balance out a bit of some of your costs. An Australian water dragon is going to run you between $750 and about $1,300, kind of depending on the size, the age, uh, whereas uh, Asian water dragons can be, any, I've seen them anywhere from $50 to $150. But they need a large habitat, so you're going to invest a lot in your lighting, your water feature, your, your size, space. You're going to have to do something that's custom built. So these are not animals to take lightly and seeing a cute little green lizard in a pet store and going, that's cute, I want it, and not doing your homework and understanding what you need for it is a problem. We are currently building our new Asian water dragon habitat. It is eight feet tall, four feet wide, and four feet deep. It's got a ton of branches to climb on, a uh, water feature that we're going to have heated, and it's going to have a filter in it. So they have a literal pond. It's going to house our big male and two females, and hopefully uh, we'll have some babies in the future. So that is a plan with them, and we're doing that because these guys are not very common. We're hoping to get some other water dragons, some Chinese water dragons, possibly another female and a male in the future, uh, because these guys are social. Uh, they do kind of have like a uh, hierarchy and will live in small groups in the wild. So as long as you have the space, and again, that is a key word, uh, these are an animal that you can have multiple together, but again, cramming three water dragons into a 60-gallon tank is not going to work. So do your homework, learn about the animals, watch videos like mine and other videos, uh, join groups that can specifically for animals that you can learn about them. That's the best way of things to do before you get an animal of any kind, but especially some of these ones that are a bit higher uh, care level than say a leopard gecko, uh, you really need to do that homework. So thanks so much for checking this out and meeting our dragons, learning about our dragons. Uh, we've met Sarah's our female water dragon before. Uh, you can check out that video up above. We will have more videos on them uh, coming up, including once their habitat is built. We're going to take a look at, uh, give a little tour of that. But in the meantime, uh, please hit the subscribe button. Uh, hit the bell to know that we're going to have uh, new videos. We have videos every Tuesday and some on Thursdays as bonus videos. And... Yeah, support us any way you can. That's appreciated. Likes on Instagram and Facebook and follows uh, are a great free way to find out all of everything that we're up to. Uh, we have a Patreon as well. All that info is down below in the description. So check that out. We'll see you next time.